So, okay, let me shift gears here a little bit. I was playing with you earlier with the 12 and 13 thing on the slide. I want to talk about the camp of Israel. When you get to Numbers chapter 2, you have all these numbering of the tribes. I'm going to suggest to you that every detail in the scripture is there by deliberate design. Well, what on earth might be hidden behind all these numbers in Numbers chapter 2? You have all these numbers. Jesus said, the volume of the book is written of me. He says that in Psalm 40, verse 7. It's quoted in Hebrews also. And so, let's take a look at this. Well, when you go through Numbers chapter 2, you discover that Judah was 74,600, the type of Issachar. They're numbering people over, the males only, over 25. But anyway, setting that aside, Judah is 74,600, Issachar 54,4. And uh, we discover that the 12 tribes are clustered into four camps. And, uh, but let's just go through these numbers, and I won't go all the details. The point is, they're all in Numbers chapter 2. And as you go through these and look them over, there they are. And you say, so what on earth, why are these numbers in your Bible? Let me tell you another secret. God always rewards the diligent. If you're paying attention to Numbers chapter 2 carefully, you know that the 12 tribes are clustered into four camps. Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun together become the camp of Judah. Reuben, Simeon, and Gad become the camp of Reuben. Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin become the camp of Ephraim, and Dan, Asher, and Naphtali, the, tribe of Dan, uh, the camp of Dan. So the nation was grouped into four camps. And then when we look at that and tally them, we have a glimpse of those four camps. So far, are you with me? Let's notice something else as we go here. You notice those are 12 tribes without Levi. Levi was separated. You see, there's 13 tribes you can choose from. You always have to get a baker's dozen, so you've got a spare here. The, the Levites camped in the middle. There was the tabernacle. We always have the bottom of the map that the, uh, with east at the bottom, north to the right, west, and so forth. And in there, we have the Levites. The three families, the, Kohathite, the Gershonites, Kohathites, and uh, Merorites are on the west, south, and north side of the tabernacle. Then at the east side, you have Moses and the priests. So that was the way the Levites, including Moses and the priests, camped. We don't know how much space were required by them, but whatever it is is going to be our unit. So whatever space that is, it is, that's the space, because you'll see what, where I'm headed here. You've got you to gotta give them credit. They really tried very hard to follow the law. And what the Torah says is the camp of Judah is to be east of the Levites. Okay. And the camp of Reuben is to be south of the Levites. And so on. When you examine that carefully, you realize that, 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 to be really strict here, what do you do with the area that's southeast? It's neither south nor east. Okay. So what do you do with that? I'm going to suggest to you that if you follow the Torah's instruction, you only can use the ordinal points of the compass. And the width of the camp for Levi is the basic unit you're going to use. And the length of the arm will be proportional to the population. So let's take a look at this. Right in the middle, we have the Levites, and they add up to about 22,000 as a total. We have Judah to the south, but they, or to the east, I mean. And the, tri the emblem of the tribe of Judah was the lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. That was, all 12 tribes had an uh, ensign. But Judah was to be the head of the camp of Judah. And so that's they all camped, but they could only camp as wide as the Levites if they're going to stay east of the Levites. They can't get wider than that, or they're no longer east of the Levites. You following me so far? Okay, and they, they would take then as much space as they needed. Reuben is to the south. His, his symbol happened to be the man, a man, and that was his ensign, and he could, he could only camp as wide as the Levites' camp was to, if he's going to be uh, uh, south of there. And then he goes as far as he needs. And then, of course, it, see, the people down here in this space that's southeast is neither south or east, so it's not camped. You're following me? That's, that's overlooked by most people unless you look at the text very carefully. Well, to, so the, the southeast, southwest, north, those are for, you know, forbidden areas. To the, to the uh, west, we have Ephraim and his three to make the camp of Ephraim, and his symbol was the ox, a symbol of servanthood, if you will. And then, of course, to the north, we have the tribe of Dan. 
Now, the tribe of Dan originally had the symbol of the serpent in Genesis 49. But Ahazer didn't like that, so he changed the symbol to an eagle with a serpent in its mouth. And that becomes the symbol, or the ensign, if you will, of the tribe of Dan. Many people fumble on that by not knowing that little detail. But the point is, his symbol was, of course, the eagle. And that's well documented through your text. And again, he would to be north. He can only be north. The only part that's north of it can only be as wide as the camp of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the Levites. So now we have a problem because we've got populations that are different. Okay, Judah is 186,000, and and uh, uh, both Reuben and uh, uh, Dan about 150 some odd, and then Ephraim has only 108. So let's get in our imaginary helicopter that's also a time machine. We'll go back to the time of the wilderness wanderings, what have you, and we'll take a look at what this looked like from the air. Isn't that interesting? That when the camp of Israel, was, the, the nation was encamped, when Balaam was up on the top of the hill for, King, for Balak, that's what he saw. And the, the, the longest one being on the east, that's the population of the camp of Judah. The smallest one to, you know, to the west, which is the camp of Ephraim. The other two are roughly the same size. You can take your Bible and make your own scale drawing for this and come to your own conclusions. But you've got a sketch, an aerial, aerial view of the, of the camp of Israel in your Bible. It's called Numbers chapter 2. To get some paper and try that when you get home. Something else, by the way, of the 12 tribes, four of them, ensigns were used as the four camps, and we have the lion, the man, the ox, and the eagle. And we recognize that right away as the four faces of the cherubim in both the seraphim in Isaiah 6 and the seraphim and uh, the uh, cherubim in uh, uh, Ezekiel 1 and 10 and certainly in Revelation 4 and 5 and on. So uh, you can run with that one if you like. But they apparently, when they were in camp, were making a model of the throne of God. The throne of God. In fact, those same four things, if you look at the design of the Gospels, we know that Matthew's Gospel is designed to present him as the Mashiach, the Messiah, the, the King of Judah. Uh, Mark has no genealogy. He's, he, he's, he's, we don't care about the pedigree of the servant. Luke emphasizes his manhood, the son of man. And John, of course, his deity, his son of God. And so uh, they have genealogies that are proportional to that. Matthew's genealogy starts with the first Jew, Abraham. Luke starts with Adam and co- goes to the end. And Mark doesn't deal with genealogies because he's dealing with a servant. You don't worry about the pedigree of the servant. John has a genealogy in his gospel, but you don't recognize it because it's the genealogy of the pre-existent one in the first three verses. And uh, as we move on, then we have Matthew, what Jesus, what Jesus said, Mark's the shooting script for Peter. It's a, what, Jesus, what he did. Luke gives us his humanity. You feel how he felt. And then, of course, John, who he really was. And so, uh, and they reach right to a distinctive audience. And uh, they each... Uh, the miracle, the first miracle fits that model, and the, uh, the each end, uh, Matthew with the resurrection, of course, is Mark with the ascension. Luke sets up his sequel book, Luke volume 2, called the Book of Acts, for the promise of the Spirit. John sets up his sequel in his thing called the Revelation. I, I believe his gospel was written before, after the Patmos experience. But uh, each one of these were recognized by the early church as being represented by the four faces of the cherubim. The lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle. The same uh, uh, signatures, if you will, that surround the camp when they're encamped. So those are things that you can take a look at and come to your own conclusions.